A little nonsense is what I need Now if you wanna get the best of me Got you smiling, that's for sure Funny how you had the best of Hello guys, welcome back to being Mrs. Frazier, or welcome if you are new. If you are new, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Come along and join my YouTube family. I'm so grateful that you guys are all here with me today. I have been looking forward to this video for quite some time. Um, it is finally time to decorate for fall. Now, you might be wondering why I'm saying finally. Well, that's because I keep seeing other people decorate and I'm like, you know what? I don't care what it feels like outside. We're going to go ahead and decorate. Now, I know some of you up in the north are getting some pretty crisp mornings. Um, however, here in Florida, we are still not quite there. We are definitely in the 90s still. Um, so... It probably won't cool off for a while unless this hurricane brings in some cool air, but we shall see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start here in the dining room. I did just want to give you guys a before just to kind of give you, you know, an idea of the space that we are going to be working with today. Um, as you can tell, my dining room and kitchen are kind of conjoined here, but we do have such a small space so this table is kind of small um if you're wondering why there are six benches we are a family of six we have me and my husband um and then our four kiddos and quite honestly i'm only doing a place setting for four <laughs> um purely because six wouldn't fit but that's okay. I just wanted to give you guys some inspiration, um, possibly on how you could decorate your table. I absolutely love how this turned out. I'm using these faux leather um, animal shape, uh, pig and cow shape placemats that I found at Hobby Lobby. Now they are part of the spring decor that they had, so I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to find them anymore. But I thought that they would be perfect for my fall place setting. Now, I will say that I do have some chickens as well, or hens, um, that I think that I have some ideas for for the spring. So make sure you're subscribed and definitely come back for that time. Um, definitely come back before that, though. <laughs> we have a lot to look forward to now that we are heading into the burr months if you will uh you know september october november and december we have a lot of decorating coming up and i cannot wait but anyway we're just gonna go ahead and get finished setting the table here i do want to use some napkins these napkins kind of help pull the stripes from the table runner so i just thought I could help that incorporate the new fall decor in with my original or older everyday decor. I don't know what it is you do. I just want you. I just need you. I don't know what it is you do. I just want to love you. I just want to hold you. just want to be with you till we grow old. Every single day, you my world 
The fun thing about the fabric or cloth napkins is you can kind of fold them any which way you want. I just wanted kind of a hint of the, the color sticking out, but I didn't want to cover the beauty of these plates. I found these plates at Hobby Lobby in the fall decor area, and I absolutely love them. They I think they're called Fall Harvest, if I remember correctly. So I didn't want to cover them up because I think they are beautiful, and I just wanted to add a little bit of color again um, to pull from that table runner. So you can definitely fold your napkins in all sorts of different ways. As you saw, I was kind of going back and forth with what I wanted to do. I couldn't fully decide, but I did decide to just kind of go at a cross like an angle here. Um, I thought it just kind of gave it a little bit of interest to the space, but um, it didn't take away from the look of the actual plate. So now I just want to add a little bit of decor in the center here. I found these beautiful glass pumpkins at Michael's. Uh, the vase, if I remember right, is from a few years ago uh, from Lowe's, I think. So, and then I also just wanted to put some dried floral. Now, I, I struggle with fake flowers. I am not your faux flower girl. I'm not a flower girl in general. So, uh, it is what it is. I, but I do absolutely love dried flowers. Uh, if you guys saw my Americana decor video, I used, uh, some dry baby's breath and lavender, um, that I actually picked up on Amazon of all places. Amazon has a lot of dry florals. You would be so surprised. There's actually some little like wedding boutonnieres on there that would be perfect for a fall wedding. Um, but anyway, I did pick these up from Michael's and I think that they just helped bring that orange color into the table for fall. And the dried florals, I think just really help make it feel like fall without, you know, being too much, which again, I, I don't really care a whole lot for florals. So if you, that is you, um, try some dried twigs <laughs> or not twigs, but like, uh, some dried florals pieces and kind of see if that helps. Um, that way it kind of adds another element. I like adding different texture and that to my decor. Um, but yet keeping them all kind of in a similar color as you can see. So we're moving into the living room and as you can see my regular everyday decor is pretty neutral. I do that on purpose so that way when holidays come that is when I add color. I don't like color all the time necessarily. Um, you know other than like this brown color or camel color um, that you see on the pillows for the leather or in the cow hide on the floor. Uh, I like to keep it pretty neutral though. I would like to add some more plants, but I am not a good plant mom. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're working on that, but we're not quite there. So anyway, again, I did just want to give you kind of a before so you can kind of get an idea of the items that I have. Now I'm going to start here on this blanket ladder. I love blanket ladders. I do not love this blanket. <laughs> um, this blanket is probably a little too fluffy for my liking and I was definitely having um, some struggles with trying to get it styled on here. I wish that I could find a, a another blanket similar to the one that you see sitting on the TV stand, the black and white one there. Um, more textured like that, but with the oranges in it. I think that would be absolutely beautiful and would look so good on the blanket stands. Now I like to do like 
one that's more uh, folded perfectly, if you will, and the other one just kind of tossed up there. I feel like it definitely just kind of gives that cozy vibe. You know, it's not quite perfect, but it looks, it still looks nice, but still gives those cozy, comfy, you know, warm feelings. And again, I was really struggling here too with this bucket. Um, I knew when I bought these pumpkins, which I found these at Kirkland's, I knew that this is where I wanted to use them. I wanted them for this bucket. I initially wanted to like fill the bucket with pumpkins, so it was kind of just overflowing and just super cute. I just wanted my house basically to scream pumpkins. Um, that was kind of the theme, if you will, this year. Uh, I like to look on Pinterest for ideas. If you have an area in your house that is specific, like, you know, blanket ladder with, with bucket or blanket ladder decor or bucket decor, fall bucket decor, you know, inspiration, stuff like that, um, Pinterest is really the way to go. They, there was quite a few ideas that I found off on Pinterest and it really just got the juices flowing for me. Um, the creativity flowing, if you will. I, cause honestly I was on the struggle bus. My mind has been in a, a fog for a while now with everything getting back to school and then we all got sick. Um, and now with this hurricane that's coming, it, it's, my mind's been kind of a mess. So I really needed to get this decorating done to kind of just help refresh the house, get my mind off of things and just get a restart. So again, I was kind of in a fog, kind of having a brain fart. And so I went on Pinterest, kind of searched around for different things that kind of uh, fit into what I wanted my, I guess, theme. Um, and then also fit in with like my, I don't even know what my decor would be considered. Modern farmhouse slash boho slash farmhouse slash Western. I, I don't even know. Um, but I just wanted it to kind of all fit and flow together. And so when I found some ideas on Pinterest, it really helped just getting those, again, those juices flowing, the creativeness just kind of flowing. So if you're kind of in a struggle bus or, you know, you're kind of at a point where you're like, okay, what what do I do here? Try Pinterest. You know, if, if I don't help you out today, I hope that I do inspire you in some aspect um, to help you with your designs. But if there's something that you didn't see, you know, maybe you have an area of your house that I don't have. Uh, maybe you have a china hutch or something like that that I, I no longer have. Uh, definitely check Pinterest. Pinterest is a great resource for a lot of things. I kind of just moved on from the blanket ladder area. <laughs> um, I was getting so frustrated with it that I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to move along and keep going because that way I knew that I could come back to it once I came along. You know, if you just keep going, sometimes it'll help like spark a d an idea for a different area so i definitely go back and fix all that so make sure you stay till the end so you guys can see how the final design came out because i absolutely love what i ended up doing and i did you know spoiler alert <laughs> i did change it up a little bit so even in this area here on the tv stand i changed it up a little bit as well so you're gonna initially see me decorate it and then i will go and then in the final look, you'll see what I changed. Sometimes I do that though. Like even, even after I'll decorate everything and then I'll let it sit for a day or two. And then I'm like, okay, 
I need to change this or change that. And you know what? That's the beauty of decor is that you can always move stuff around or add to it or take away. Um, I always make sure that I keep pieces. I have a couple totes in our shed. My husband's like, why are you keeping this if you're not using it? Well, you never know. I, I might end up using it. And honestly, I did end up using a lot of uh, non-fall decor pieces in my fall decor this year. So we're going to go ahead and move on over to this area now. Again, these are just a bunch of fall or um, dried uh, flowers. <laughs> I'm losing my words. If you guys are been here you guys know that I like stumble across my words all the time um but anyway they're dried florals straw cattails you know stuff like that um that I found on Amazon and I do have an Amazon storefront if you guys are interested in anything uh if I don't have it linked below in the description a lot of things do come from Amazon, and if they don't, then I try to find something, and I will put those in my Amazon storefront. I do get a small commission from those Amazon items if you buy anything off of my links. Now, don't worry, though. It is at no extra cost to you. But anyway, going back to the decor, now that I got off on a little bit of a, a sidetrack trip there, um, I'm just separating down these dried pieces. The ones that I'm putting off to the side, I just didn't want on this area anymore. I just felt like it was just not what I was looking for for this look. So I did separate everything down and I thought I wanted to use it in another area later on. So make sure you stick around. Tip from Tammy, if you like, uh, if your style is like boho or farmhouse, definitely find some old pieces. And when I say old, I mean like antique, vintage. It really helps, in my opinion, to just bring in the, that extra coziness up for fall decor. Now you'll see these brown jars are actually, they're old, but they're not vintage old they are just pieces that i've had around for a few years that i picked up at hobby lobby which they do still currently sell i have seen them every year since i've bought them but um the little stand that the middle one is standing on that is an actual vintage piece that i found at um our local antiques place uh same with this toolbox this is an old toolbox that came um, from there, I just like kind of, I guess, the beat up look of it. I think it just kind of helps add character to your decor. Again, with the warmth and coziness, there's just something about a good vintage piece, a good wooden vintage piece that just really gives me all the vibes that I'm looking for. Um, also, another tip, as you saw, I put a towel underneath to kind of help lift up these pumpkins. That is basically just kind of a filler. Um, I don't have any craft foam or floral foam or anything like that, and so that's why I use towels. So if you're ever looking for a filler instead of, you know, buying more pumpkins or something like that, try using a rolled up towel. Um, it probably would have even worked if I used like a bath towel um, or something like that. But see, you can't even see it, so it really doesn't even matter what color it is. I just used actually a Christmas hand towel and then some of the leftover cloth napkins to fill that space.
another thing I like to do while decorating is just kind of stepping back and taking a look and seeing if it looks cohesive, if it looks okay. Because um, sometimes when you're right up on uh, on your display or what you're decorating, it looks different than when you take a step back. So make sure that you're constantly just stepping back, kind of looking at what you have up. Um, I also like to do kind of a rule of three when it comes to items. I know uh, I kind of broke my rule on the stand, but it works out because like with these glass jars and then having that little um, stool looking thing with the pumpkins that I moved, I'm going to move them back, don't worry. It kind of gives like a th three piece, it brings your eye to the... Uh, the stool with the pumpkins and then kind of out to the glass um, vases beside it. So I, I kind of decorated this space in three different looks, but they're kind of all cohesive because I'm using similar or the same items. So if you have like a long bar like this, it definitely makes it easier to kind of break it down into little sections. Um, which is kind of like I said what I did it just it made it easier instead of trying to decide what I wanted clear across it and just making the project smaller so if you have like uh, um, shelves you know go shelf by shelf instead of making it like oh I got to do this whole project just break it down into smaller projects and it makes it easier to decorate but then again back up, take a look, make sure it still looks cohesive after you're done decorating each section. Why don't we go back to, why don't we go back to, never wanted to end it like we did. I guess shit happens for a reason, but it's like something feels different from back then. Why don't we go back to, why don't we go back to, Alrighty, so that's going to be the look for the living room. I am really loving how a lot of this is just turning out. It looks super cute and it's definitely going the way that I was wanting it to. Um, so I'm hoping that this is really helping you guys. You know, again, this would be so easy too if you wanted to keep a lot of these same pieces for when Halloween comes around. You could change out a few pieces, key pieces, like even like this pillow for a Halloween pillow um, or, an, or the blanket. You could change out the orange for some black, um, like a black blanket. And even so, just adding a few maybe little ghosts here and there or a little bats here and there. Um, it definitely makes it real easy to add those different items to switch over from fall to Halloween and then you could always take those Halloween items back out and then you still are decorated for fall once Halloween is over but now we're gonna go ahead and move on to this last space here I love this vintage scale if you haven't figured it out yet I am all about old things so um, I was on the struggle bus with this. I bought this scale. I knew what I wanted it for. I wanted to put some dried florals in it, but I cannot find the dried florals that I want. So I have this vintage wooden scoop here that I bought when I bought the scale. So I thought I would try to add that to it and I was just, just struggling, but I just decided to go ahead and fix it and throw the pumpkins in there and you know what it looks okay do I love it no but I will probably if I ever come across what I'm looking for I will probably change that but anyway guys that's gonna be it for today I hope you enjoyed I hope it was somewhat inspiring Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and come back next time because again, I have a lot of more inspiration for you guys. Stay happy, healthy, and safe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. I was promised as a token from above. Mother son sticking.
Hello guys, welcome back to being at Mrs. Frazier, or welcome if you are new. If you are new, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Come along and join my YouTube family. I have been wanting to do something with this coffee bar for quite some time, and I just could not figure out what it's... Yes, I'm doing a fall decorate, I guess, if you will, for it, but I also just needed to add some type of warmth to the area. When we first bought our house uh, just over a year ago here in Florida, we remodeled this entire kitchen. Well, minus the floors. <laughs> uh, but we tore out the old cupboards and put in new cupboards. They're white, beautiful cupboards. I love them. Um, and then our countertops are obviously black, white, with a little bit of like a taupey brownish gray color. Um, so very cool, calm tones, but I want it to feel, I don't know. It, it's, it's very bright, which I needed because this space is very dark and small. Um, someday I would really like to put in like a skylight or something in the kitchen, but that's not for today. Um, so I want to add warmth to the area and I really wasn't sure how other than to add some wood tones. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. I do want to go ahead and wipe off the counter. Um, these don't get moved all the time. So, you know, crumbs and whatnot build up behind the coffee pots and all that so we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we're gonna go ahead and add some of that warmth that i was just talking about I've been on the hunt for a wood tray uh, to put in this space. You know, I really feel like trays just kind of help finish a space off. It kind of helps like make that area kind of like an area rug finishes the space. It kind of helps bring everything together. Well, I kind of feel like that is the same way with trays. Um, however, I just was not finding the right tray. And I looked and I looked, I looked at Hobby Lobby, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, all the places. And you guys, I was sleeping on Ross because I walked into Ross, I looked at some of their wood pieces, and I found this beautiful board. Now, this is not just a flimsy little cheap board. It was cheap. It was only $12.99, if you can believe that. Um, but it is a hot, uh, like solid, heavy piece of wood. Um, and it is the most beautiful color. It, I think it's from India or something like that. It had, uh, like an India label on it, but absolutely gorgeous piece of wood. And it did exactly what I needed it to do. It brought warmth into this dark corner. Um, the kitchen is dark anyways, other than the, obviously the daylight bulbs that we have to help brighten up the space. And even the white cabinets really brighten up the space. But overall, it's just dark because you just have this one tiny window. And this window literally leads out into our lanai, which is a covered area. Um, so you don't get a whole lot of sun. So anyway, the this board really just brought the warmth into this coffee bar space where I needed it. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out though how I want to lay everything out. Uh, it's kind of hard because we have two machines. My dream machine would be to get an actual um, espresso maker. I would absolutely love to have an espresso maker. But for now we have the Nespresso and a Keurig. Um, uh, myself and my children are the ones that use the coffee makers. The Hubs doesn't drink coffee a whole lot. Um, I mean, maybe once a year or less, <laughs> to be honest. But I drink coffee every single day. And so do my older two children. And then when it gets kind of cooler out, um, they like to bring out the hot cocoa and the um, apple cider and stuff like that. So that goes more with the Keurig. So the Keurig really doesn't get a whole lot of use during the summer months, which I mean, I guess like, what is that? Like 10 months out of the year here in Florida? I don't know, but anyway, so we have more Nespresso pods than anything, 
but I do want to leave it out on the counter just in case it wants anyone wants to use it um, the Keurig that is and so like I said the Nespresso gets used every single day um, sometimes multiple times a day uh, so those are the pods that I keep out on a regular basis. Now, you saw I do have my Nespresso pods in a jar, uh, and I didn't like the way that it was just kind of sitting flat on that wood. I felt like it needed another, like, dimension. Um, so I found this little round stand. I was actually using it for my salt and pepper over by my stove, which that area is a whole nother problem because I really wasn't liking the way that was looking either. Um, so I brought it over here and I really love the way it just raised that jar up with the Nespresso pods um, and just kind of gave it another form of dimension. So next up I'm going to go ahead and stock up these little mason jars that I found at home goods i actually bought these i think last year but they have jars like this all the time and they're really affordable so i like to be able to see what i'm what i have um I, there are so many cute canisters and stuff but i just i like the clear glass to be able to see so i picked up a few little coffee treats um at i think i got those little pumpkin spice sticks at beals uh, but I know that I've seen them at Home Goods, CJ Maxx, those type of places. And then the marshmallows. Um, did those come from? I think those came from Ross. So again, I was sleeping on Ross, but I'm absolutely loving the way that this is turning out. I hope that you guys are kind of getting inspired on how to add the warmth to your little coffee bars. Uh, at our old house, I actually had a coffee bar, so this is kind of a new situation, trying to learn how to use the counter space that we have. So now that the base of my count or my coffee bar is created or set up, um, I want to go ahead and add some fun little Halloween decor. I found these spoons at Bucky's. Um, don't worry though, they are made by Mud Pie and you can get them online. I will make sure to link them down below for you. I found them on Amazon for the same price that I paid for them at Bucky's. They are so cute, you guys, and technically um, they're labeled as candy spoons. Um, I'm not going to use them. I just wanted them for decor. I just thought they were just so cute. You guys, Mud Pie makes like the cutest decor and I can't even handle it. Like it is so cute. Cute. Um, sometimes it's a little pricey though, but these spoons, they were a little bit of a splurge, but they were so cute and I knew I just had to have them. I found the little bowl that I'm sitting them in at uh, Beals, which again, I knew that I wanted a bowl to put them in. I just could not for the life of me find what I was looking for. Happened to go into Beals and voila, there it was. So I thought it was absolutely perfect. And I really love the way this is turning out. This little pumpkin is from Hobby Lobby. Now, Hobby Lobby does not carry Halloween. Um, we all know, understand why. Um, so they do not carry Halloween decor. So I'm doing more, I guess, of a following um fall and halloween together uh for my little coffee bar setup this year um but i just think it is so cute and i really love how everything turned out it is absolutely perfect it brought the warmth in that i was looking for and it just kind of gave this corner something special and nice to look at but since we are on the coffee subject i thought i would share a yummy recipe um, for those of you that are coffee lovers, you guys probably maybe drink coffee creamer. Um, and those store coffee creamers are so bad for you. They are made with vegetable oil and we all know vegetable oil is not good, but I'm not here to preach about what's good and what's not because yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Um, but I promise you that this coffee creamer is so much better. It tastes. Forget the quality because I'm literally putting a whole can of uh, sweetened condensed milk in there. Forget that. Uh, the health part of it because whatever. Um, but it just tastes so much better. 
I, I absolutely love this pumpkin spice creamer. My kids love it. Um, it it's, it's absolutely delicious. <laughs> Um, anyway, so it's literally so easy. It's a cup and a half of milk. Um, you can use skim milk, one, two, whole, uh, whipping cream if you would like. It kind of depends on your preferences. Um, you could probably even use like oat milk because oat milk I think is pretty creamy. Um, but it really depends on your preferences. I personally use skim milk because that's just what I have and I, I don't like buying extra stuff um, for just a small amount <laughs> being used. So anyway, a cup and a half of your choice of milk, a can of sweetened condensed milk, and let's see, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Um, and you're gonna use three teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. If you don't have pumpkin spice, I am mixing up my words. <laughs> Typical Tammy fashion here. But if you don't have pumpkin pie spice, I think it's like clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, and I feel like there's another one and it's just a blend of those spices. But anyway, um, then you can also add in three tablespoons of pumpkin puree. Now you can make this from your own pumpkin. Um, you're on pie pumpkin or you can use the Libby's like I did. Um, I'm sure off-brand cans will work as well. But then you just basically stir it and heat it until it is steaming. Look at that goodness. Oh, my mouth is watering just seeing that. I have not made my coffee yet this morning, so I'm about to go use this beautiful coffee creamer. It is so good. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and make a cup of coffee. I made the creamer, so let's make the coffee now. And I'm going to use the pumpkin pie sauce. I was so excited to find this from Tarani's. Um, I could not find it anywhere, and I looked everywhere until Ross, again, like I said, I was sleeping on Ross, you guys. And I found it, and I thought I would just pour a little bit in there with my Nespresso pod and my amazing pumpkin pie or pumpkin spice creamer in this moment gonna lay here on the grass i don't need to feel lonely i am finally home at last Dad Alrighty guys, that's going to be it for today. I hope this video gave you a little bit of inspiration, maybe some motivation, um, or just a yummy recipe. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to try this recipe, and if you do, what you think about it. Uh, anyway guys, I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and safe. Make sure you come back because Sunday's video, we are finally decorating the front porch for fall, uh, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. But anyway, Stay happy, healthy, and safe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Blindfold, no matter what I do, I'm coming home to you. And I don't know why, don't know why, don't know why. I'm always feeling homesick. What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life Deep connection, lights a spark It's like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreamers we're back and we are decorating the front porch as you can see we're jumping back a few videos um, and I'm just giving you a quick share of the DIY terracotta pumpkins that I made um, if you've already seen this go ahead and skip through I don't it won't hurt my feelings but um, if you haven't and this is your first video first of all welcome I'm Tammy I'm a mama of four we recently moved from Nebraska down here to Florida so 
Um, this is the first year that I will be decorating our front porch and I am so stinking excited. I absolutely love how it turned out, so I'm excited to share that with you. But first and foremost, if you haven't seen my DIY video, definitely go check it out. It was so fun to create all these spooky little critters uh, with you guys. Um, but these pumpkins are one of them. They are the Pottery Barn dupe, if you will. Um, Potter Pottery Barn, as we all know, it has absolutely beautiful things, but sometimes they're a little bit out of the normal person's price range. So I decided to do the dupe that is going viral on TikTok, and I painted these plastic jack-o'-lanterns that I picked up at Lowe's. Um, I gave them each one single coat of a color that I liked. I, it's kind of a muted orange. Um, it looks more terracotta to me, but I gave them one coat. And then, as you saw, I just mixed in some baking soda with the paint to kind of thicken it up and give it a little bit more texture. And while that paint was still wet, I sprinkled some flour on um, just to kind of give it even more of a drier clay style texture. See how they turned out. I absolutely love them. I will say I did use a fixative as a sealant and they're not staying up to the Florida humidity. <laughs> that flower is like poof gone. So um, the sealant did not do great, but that's okay. Um, a, an easier route to that would have probably been some spray paint, <laughs> but you live and you learn. Uh, if they were indoor decor, I think it would have worked out fabulously, but um, next stop, I went to Kohl's, did a little bit of shopping. I was on the hunt for some outdoor pillows and a wreath, um, and I did not find pillows there, but I did also go to Lowe's to pick up some mums and other items, and yeah, so as you can see, we have everything put up here. Um, last summer or this last summer we bought these chairs and I absolutely love them they're like a poly texture so they can withhold or withstand the Florida weather <laughs> um, and I've been wanting to get a table and I've been going back and forth on what table to get and where to buy it at and now that summer is slowly disappearing, um, not temperature wise, just decor wise, I could no longer find a table in store. So I found this cute little poly table off of Amazon. I will definitely make sure I link it for you guys if you are interested in it. It is the perfect little table uh, for these chairs. I absolutely love it and it was super simple to put together plus it's perfect for outside in Florida, or anywhere, realistically. <laughs> It's funny after I got all said and done with this project I looked at my husband I was like you know I should have pressure washed the uh, the papers they I don't know what is going on here but they definitely have some yuck built up into them again and I missed I missed <laughs> the opportunity because uh, last summer you guys obviously enjoyed the pressure washing that video got so much love um, but I didn't and I don't know why so anyway we're just gonna go ahead and skip right to the decorating I picked up these mums and these pillows at Lowe's uh, for whatever reason none of the mums are blooming at my Lowe's I don't know if that's a Florida heat situation or just a 
typical situation, I don't know. Um, but I did pick up a variety of colors. Um, these ones in the orange container are like an orangey yellow color. They are so pretty. I'm so excited for them to really bloom. Uh, but I was going kind of back and forth on how I wanted to decorate this space. As you saw my little mermaid, um, I picked her up at Beals. I'm not sure where all Beals is at in the country or in the world. Um, but they have a lot of cute stuff. So if you have a Beals, definitely check them out. But anyway, I kind of gave up on that spot for the time being. I'm not really loving it. So I decided to step away for a minute and go to the front door because the front door is cut and dry, super easy. I love a layered rug look, uh, but I will say I have the hardest time keeping even though we have a gutter and it's covered for whatever reason, the rugs that I put here still get nasty. Um, so I found a plaid outdoor rug at Lowe's and I am loving it so far so I can still have my layered rugs. Um, but next I wanted to put a little bit of color in this area, um, a little bit of decor if you will. but. This whole area in the front of our house, like the porch area, is all flat. There's no stairs, no layered, um, and all the pictures you see on like Pinterest and Instagram, they all have like stairs. And I love the layered look, so because I don't have that option, I like to use things not only of different sizes to give that different level appearance, but also I picked up this little hay bale to help also lift to give that lift or to give that staggered appearance. So if your house is like mine and has that flat front porch area and you still wanna decorate but you don't know how to do it, get things of varying sizes and then also try some hay bales. Now I will say that I was a little nervous getting the hay bale because we have little lizards um, all over the place and I really feel like they're gonna make that hay bale at home but it is wrapped in plastic and I left the plastic on I just turned the label to the back so you couldn't see it but anyway I, I like the way the dimension that it gave there um, and then I just kind of wanted to spread that dimension throughout my front styled porch here um, I still want it to be functional I still want to be able to sit in the chairs and enjoy the porch um, especially on the cooler nights or even on the very rare cool mornings um, that sometimes come along here in the fall but I also wanted it to look nice so again I just added a few more mums um, I these ones let's see I think the ones by the mermaid are going to be like a pretty pinky purple color uh, the ones in the middle on the ground are going to be that real deep red burgundy color. I am absolutely in love with those and I cannot wait until they get full bloom. And then the ones on the, the far side there are like an orange, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, I'll definitely make sure that I post um, a final picture once they all bloom over on Instagram. So make sure you're following me over there at being underscore Mrs. Frazier. But... Anyway, this is the wreath that I found. I did end up finding it at Kohl's. Um, the original wreath that I had, I picked up at Home Goods last year, and it just was not my vibe this year. <laughs> so I wanted something a little more fall, a little more festive, with you know more of the fall darker colors. Um, so like I said, I found this wreath. I think it was like thirty dollars or something like that. Um, I do know that Big Lots had a similar one. Um, the colors were just a little bit off. Uh, Kohl's also had another one with like red and orange and a cream, I think is what the colors were. They're just a little bit varying, but I didn't like where the hook was. So I had to have my husband find me a little suction cup hook, which worked perfectly. And I absolutely loved how this turned out. So. Um, yeah, anyway, I picked that up at Kohl's. Like I said, I feel like it was a regular price of $30, but I know I had a coupon because there's always coupons. And what does Tammy always say? Never pay full price for anything. Right, guys? <laughs> Trust me, it's as hard for me to 
And in typical Tammy fashion, when you notice something needs clean, clean it. So I noticed the front door was dirty and so I wanted to clean it up. You guys and just like that we are all done i hope you guys loved it and got a little bit of inspiration i didn't want to go super out there spend a ton of money i just wanted to keep things simple and cute but still festive so i hope if that is in up your alley i hope it gave you some inspiration um or even some ideas of where to pick up some other things so Anyway, I hope you all stay happy, healthy, and safe. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button on your way out, and we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Maybe I shouldn't call you Or leave a message at all So I try to be patient Cause nothing's written on the wall Yeah, it's too soon to mention how I've begun to feel that I want your attention this time it is for me. Hello guys and welcome back to being Mrs. Frazier. As you can see, we have some fun projects to tackle today. We are going to do some DIY Pottery Barn dupes. I also have just a fun little project at the end of the video. Um, but I don't know if you guys have seen the viral terracotta pumpkins, but I have seen them everywhere. And so many influencers at uh, Fall Decor and y'all, they're like well over like $200. They're also sold out currently, but I have seen resale sites selling them for hundreds and hundreds of dollars and your girl ain't got the type of money. So <laughs> we're gonna try to find a way to make some dupes, which we're gonna go about this using these plastic pumpkins. Now these are just like plastic jack-o'-lanterns that light up. Um, I purchased them at Lowe's as well as the paint um, and the brushes. I will say one thing I would definitely change on these is I would not be using a sponge brush. I would get a regular like stippling brush or paint brush. Um, but yes, this, this project was definitely a lot cheaper. Uh, a lot more cost effective affordable it was about 50 bucks for all of my supplies so again definitely much cheaper than the original pottery barn uh pumpkins that y'all see i will say also that these are so much lighter weight i'm hoping that, that means that they were are easier to store once it's time to put everything away um, but we're just going to start off by painting. Now I will say that everybody has their own opinion on what color terracotta should be. We all, you know, colors change based off of screens and what your eyes see. Um, this color is the Spiced Cider from Sherwin-Williams. Now you could definitely go to the craft store and just pick up some craft paint, um, like a craft acrylic paint. I just got the little sample size at Lowe's, so that way it's kind of a one-stop shop for everywhere. Um, it was like seven dollars i think for this little jar which is not bad at all so i'm just gonna go ahead and get a base layer on of everything and get them all three painted give me some time give me some time to get stronger I'll be okay, just give me a little bit longer Yeah, we're gonna win The struggle we're in It's never goodbye, it's never goodbye till it's over Come back to love I was so crazy to lose you Just come back to love Let's never
stretching my arm out. I want. So once the base coat is dry, I am going in with a second coat. I'm just mixing some baking soda with that paint that I already have, um, just to kind of give it a thicker, more grittier appearance. That way it's looking a little more stone-like. Now, I would almost recommend even just skipping this and you could totally go in with, um, you know, that stone paint. There, there's like a spray paint that has that stone texture to it. You could totally make this so much easier and just spray painting them and, and be done with it like that. Uh, just to give it that thicker, um, it would probably give it a more even appearance as well, to be honest. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this again. Paint another coat on all three pumpkins. Um, before it dries though, I'm going to do one pumpkin at a time, you'll see here. I go ahead and get this a good coat of that thicker paint. And then before it dries, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some flour all over it. Um, it just kind of gives that more dry, I guess, powdery appearance that terracotta has. Um, I don't know really how to explain it. This part was a learning process, I will say. Um, my favorite one is actually the second one that I do, not the first and not the last, but it's all good. I think they turned out really good. See how they kind of have that stone texture to them? That's what you kind of want. And you get that between the baking soda mixed with the paint and then adding that flour on and just packing it on and then brushing it off. You can use a dry brush or even just your hand. I didn't have a brush. I just used my hand. So, and then you just have to let them fully dry. Now I will say that I did spray um, fix a tiff on them as like a sealant. Tired snowflakes are coming down. Collapse into water when they hit the ground. I hear the sound of empty streets. Alrighty guys, next up is another Pottery Barn dupe. This is the dupe for Gus the Ghost. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this little guy. I will pop a picture up here on the screen for you guys. But he is so stinking cute. And you can get him with a pumpkin or without. I did buy enough uh, fabric here to make two. I didn't intentionally do that. Um, I was only going to make one, the one with the little pumpkin. Um... But I bought more fabric than needed because I really wasn't sure. And this was kind of a guess-as-you-go type of situation. Uh, but I definitely had enough for two. So I'm going to go and buy some more polyfill so I can go ahead and make another one. I think my second one, though, is going to be like the other Gus and not have a pumpkin. He's just going to be there. But he is so stinking cute. And you guys, this was so easy once I figured out what I was doing with the Sherpa here, um, I will say it was actually more cost effective to buy Sherpa at Hobby Lobby, which is where I got the polyfill from. Um, however, my Hobby Lobby was out of white, and so I really wanted white. I have seen people do this in a matter of colors. Um, I guess it's totally up to you what color you want to do, but I just liked the white, and so I did go over to Joann's and pick this up. Um, I think it was about $19 for a yard and a half of fabric. Now, Gus the Ghost is about $85. Um, I think $75 to $85, whether you get him with a pumpkin or not. Uh, since we're making the pumpkin one, we're going to go ahead and base the cost off of that. It was $85.50, if I remember correctly. Um, and my total project for one ghost cost me about $15. So... I'm saving about $75, so that's a win in my book. Um, mine also turns out a little bigger <laughs> than the original Gus the Ghost, but that's okay because, you guys, it turned out so cute. Um, you can also do this a variety of ways. I went the easiest route, which is just hot gluing all the seams closed. Um, you could definitely make this a little more durable, if you will, um, and use maybe even a fabric glue. Or if you are a sewer 
or a seamstress or you know you have a uh, sew machine you could definitely pull out the sew machine and do this so much easier and it'd be much nicer and a lot more durable um and then maybe your kiddos could play with it i will say the hot glue worked perfectly fine he's not going to be a toy for us um he's going to be used more as decor so yeah <laughs> he just turned out so cute though but again i was just uh, hot gluing the seams and then I'm using some twine to try to basically tie off that end um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff him with some polyfill yeah, there's a party in the streets and the city's on fire You guys, you could make this even an easier project and just use like a stuffed animal with like a little Sherpa blanket that you could cut in half because um, there's Sherpa throws. I don't know how much they are, but you could definitely find a white Sherpa throw with a little stuffed animal and just cut it down to a square and throw it over the stuffed animal. Give him a pumpkin and some eyes and super cute. You could use a, a round pillow form for underneath. You really could go about this in a matter of ways. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you have access to, um, how easy of a project you really want this to be, and just kind of go from there. I will say the next wing that I make, because since I do have enough to make another Gus, um, I just have to buy the polyfill. I think I'm gonna buy some poly beads as well and put beads in the bottom of that to kind of make it, um, so he doesn't want to fall over because he doesn't like to stand up very well and that needs fixed <laughs> so as you can see it kind of just keeps toppling over i do get him to stand up and he's fine now that he has like his little um blanket over him uh he stands up just fine but i think it would be easier if there were like the little poly beads in the in his base or in the bottom of him to just kind of help keep him upright if you will so yeah, just a little tip from Tammy, definitely get you some poly beads. I know that's going to add a little bit to the cost of the project, but I definitely think it would be worth it. Um, again, I'm just using some hot glue to go on and um, fix the seams. Now, again, you can definitely pull out the sew machine and do all this, make some proper edges, all that fun stuff. Your girl is not really a seamstress. I'm not great at sewing. Um, I don't even know that my sewing machine made it here when we moved to, to Florida. <laughs> so I'm just going about it the easy way using the hot glue. Again, it's not going to be a toy, so he doesn't need to be washed or anything like that. Um, and I'm just folding over the edges. I would do without you. Yeah, you pull me up when I'm falling down. Hey, now look into my eyes. You can use them as a mirror. I definitely struggled a little bit here trying to get the blanket portion of this centered. Um, I tried to fold it in half and try to find the center that way, but it just was not laying right. Eventually I got it though. And then I basically just gathered the corners to kind of look like he had little hands underneath um, holding on to that little pumpkin. Now I will say that little pumpkin was just like a pick from Hobby Lobby. Um, I think it was like $1.99, but all their stuff is like 40% off right now. So it was just over a buck for that thing. And I just pulled the stem out or the like pick part out. So it's not squishy or soft. It's like a, probably a styrofoam ball wrapped in that Sherpa. So you could definitely find um, actual like squishy ones, uh, squishy little pumpkins and make that so it is actually squishy and more like the Pottery Barn one. But again, it's not a toy, so it didn't bother me. Um, 
I also thought that I had felt for the eyes and I did not. So I found this Cricut uh, pleather that was in one of my craft drawers. Um, so I decided to use what I have instead of going back out and buying some felt. Now, again, you can make this your own. Use your felt, use um, whatever you would like. If you would rather even use some black Sherpa, you can make little eyeballs with that or like the little cutouts, I guess. They're not like eyeballs on ghosts. I don't know, cutouts, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But I just thought this was the easiest way for me and I absolutely love how it turned out. I think he is so cute. So. You guys will have to let me know if you make him because, again, I just absolutely love him. He may not be exactly like the Pottery Barn Gus, but he is so cute. And my my son absolutely loves him. He keeps trying to play with him. But I can't wait to make the second one. So definitely come back because you will get to see me using these guys when we decorate for Halloween. So next up are some cheesecloth ghosts. We are starting with some liquid starch, some pipe cleaners, some balloons, um, and then the cheesecloth here. Now you can get this at a variety of places. I bought everything you see here at Walmart. Um, and then I'm just using some cups that I have. And then you're also gonna need a bowl to pour the starch in over the cheesecloth. So I will say, I think this cost about $12 or so for everything. Um, you could find a smaller bottle of starch because I literally used like a half a cup of starch, I think total. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have this entire bottle of starch now and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, maybe we'll make some more ghost families here in the next few days. I don't know, <laughs> make an entire ghost family, I should say, but. Um, this is definitely enough to make at least two, depending on how big you make them. So as you can see, I'm using just some cups for the forms. I'm going to blow up the balloons uh, to make like the round shape of the head and sit them in the cups just to kind of make that round taller shape of a ghost. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and cut my cheesecloth down. Now, I'm cutting it down to have about four strips or so per ghost. Again, this may change depending on what you want um, and how you want your ghost to look. This is the first time I have ever made these, so I was just kind of going with the flow of it, if you will. Uh, and I, I'm definitely not the, obviously, the inventor or whatever. This is not my idea. Um, actually, back in like third or fourth grade, one of the um, room moms made these little ghosts for all of the kids. And they were so super, super cute. Um, but I'm really starting to see them again. They're really becoming popular again. So I thought I would make my own. Now, if you don't wanna make them, you can go on Etsy. I have seen them on there, but they are so easy, you guys. So I definitely recommend giving them a try. I am using pipe cleaners, but I would definitely recommend if you have like an old wire coat hanger or some like thicker wire, definitely do that instead because these pipe cleaners were so flimsy. They didn't, they work out in the end, not as great as I would have liked them to, but it definitely works out. I still think they turned out so cute and I am absolutely in love with them. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen my previous videos, uh, but I am like really been obsessed with ghosts this year. I just think they, the ghosts that pe they are coming out with in the decor and stuff are just so stinking cute. So, yep, I, I just, I just wanted to make a whole bunch of ghosts. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Again, I'm, I would definitely recommend using a different type of wire, but your girl made it work. It is what it is. 
But we're just getting these kind of forms created with the balloons and the cups. You can use different cups. You can use different, you could use like a big pickle jar or little pickle jar. You can make them smaller or bigger, really whatever your heart's desires. So anyway, now that my forms are ready, my cheesecloth is prepped. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this liquid starch in the bowl. And we're going to drop the cheesecloth in. Now, I do do this a variety of ways. The first way, I just put all of the cheesecloth in and poured some liquid starch in there. The second way is doing one piece at a time, which I would recommend because it's easier to separate them that way. Um, I kind of made a mess of it with this first one, throwing them all in there, but we got it worked out. It's all fine and dandy. Um, I also wore gloves. Now, I don't know that it's necessary to wear gloves, um, but I didn't want it on my hands because it's kind of sticky. So I definitely, I just put some gloves on. <laughs> They're actually my hair color gloves. I have a whole box of them. So I decided to throw them on. Um, and then you just wring out all the excess and lay it over your form until you have it draped or laid over however you like. I will say though, make sure there is enough on the base, like around the base to help hold the ghost up. So it has like little like legs, I guess, if you will, um, because these do not dry completely solid. The, the fabric is still like squishable soft, but it's firm that it holds its shape, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Again, with the second one, I am just putting one piece into the starch at a time. Um, it just made it easier to separate everything uh, and spread it all out and wring it out and all of that. So you're going to want to let these dry for quite a number of hours. I think mine took maybe 12 or more hours. I guess it really depends on how well you wring, um, wring the starch out of them. But yeah, so mine took about 12 hours, but uh, you definitely want to leave it on the form until it is completely dry. Uh, there's, you know, even up underneath because underneath took the longest, like where their little feet, I guess. I don't know what you would call that, where the like fabric drapes down onto the counter up underneath of there was stayed wet the longest. So um, now you can see everything is dry and I am moving on to the decorating portion of it. Um, I, I'm going back to my trusty Cricut pleather <laughs> and just cutting out some eyes. I realistically could have just put this in my Cricut machine and cut out some ovals and called it a day instead of trying to cut it out myself. Uh, but I didn't want to. I wanted this project to be as easy as possible and without all the fancy schmancy tools and things that others might not have available to them or just not have at all um so yeah so we got I, I, these i started with these little tiny beady eyes and i wasn't a fan so i wanted to make a little bit bigger like more oval shape eyes 
Um, you'll see that's what I'm doing here, but yeah, so I definitely love the way these turned out. They are so stinking cute. Uh, you could definitely add like the one with the little hands out. You could definitely put, make it so it looks like he's holding a little pumpkin or maybe a little sign that says like boo or happy Halloween or, you know, any little saying that you want. He could be holding like a little flower, a little fall like sunflower or something. You could put little top hats on these guys. You could really go with anything, you know? And honestly, you know, I just thought of something. I should have tried putting glitter in the starch with them. <gasps> How fun would that have been? Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that sooner? Your girl loves glitter. If you've been around, y'all know. <laughs> now I'm disappointed that I didn't think of that, you guys. But that's okay. Um, anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and finish this up here. I am. I do have a little pack of lights that I bought at Michael's. I think they were like two dollars for the little pack of them. Um, they're like little fairy lights. They're a cold white or purple. They can flicker. Um, they can sit still. They can fade away. But they are so pretty. And that is what I'm going to I'm going to put inside of the ghost here. I will definitely show that to you guys here in a little bit. But anyway, you guys will have to let me know down in the comments if you guys are making these. If you make them, tag me over on Instagram at being underscore Mrs. Frazier. I would love to see you guys make one of these fun uh, Halloween decor items. So anyway, guys, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If it helps give you guys any inspiration or ideas of your own, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. Cause you're going to want to come back and see how we use these guys. Um, all of them, the pumpkins, Gus, and these little ghosties in our Halloween decor, which will be coming up here in about a week. I think a week or two. We'll see. <laughs> um, but anyway, I can't wait to share that with you guys. Until next time, stay happy, healthy, and safe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Hello guys, welcome back to being Mrs. Frazier, or welcome if you are new. If you are new, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Come along and join my YouTube family. I'm so grateful that you decided to click on my video today, and I definitely have some fun in store. But first, we need to do a little bit of tidy, you know, the work comes before the play here. So we're going to go ahead, just kind of tidy up the living room area, just you know clean up the space get everything kind of picked up and put away and back in its spot and then i'm going to do a little bit of cleaning just super light cleaning um because today's video is all about decorating for halloween who is so excited i am so excited that we are officially in fall the weather although not by much, is starting to cool down. Um, we've actually had a lot of rain here in Florida. Uh, you would think that we were back in the beginning of summer. But anyway, I am so excited for fall. I'm so excited for the burr months, if you will. All the decorating that comes with them, the holidays, the fun. And this is just the start of it all. So I hope, again, you will hit that subscribe button. And come along on this little adventure. We have cleaning 
now um, I do post some cleaning videos motivational videos for you guys I love to share decor inspiration we go shopping together who doesn't love a bestie to go shopping with because you know I am that girl just for you so anyway stay tuned guys and hang out let me know what you guys think down in the comments and yeah let's get this cleaning done so we can decorate I did go ahead and bring out the decor pieces that I have. Um, I'm just adding to my fall decor that I already have. I don't want to add a ton of Halloween. I just kind of want to add touches here and there. Um, you will see a lot of ghosts. <laughs> uh, apparently, I am on a ghost kick, so I did... Um, I ordered these cute little guys off of Etsy. They are so stinking cute, you guys. They're just like little 3D printed ghosts that have little legs. Um, you can stick them on like a little post and put them like in your um, like flowers or whatever you want to do. But they are just 3D printed. Uh, they're so stinking cute, though. They can sit like that or they can sit obviously up on their feet like that. Um, there is a wide variety of them online in different colors and in different companies and sizes and all of the above but I will make sure that I link um, the person that I bought from down in the description for you guys so that way if you decide that you want to get them they are super cute they came super fast so you definitely have plenty of time to order uh, to add to your decor um, I did pick up some black like spider webbing. Now I'm not sure I'm going to use this inside. I might end up using this outside, but we will see because honestly, I think it would be really cute, but I don't want um, any of the lizards to get caught in it because if you guys know, we live in Florida and there are lizards everywhere, so um, I would feel really bad. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this um, if I use it at all because again, I kind of wanted to use it outside, I think. Uh, but I, again, don't want the lizards caught in it, so that's on hold for now, but 
Um, I just picked that up at Michael's. I do have these creepy cloths that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Um, they came in a variety of different colors. I got black. Um, I'm going to use one on here on the dining room table and then I'm also going to put one um, somewhere up here and then I think um, above the TV as well but we will see. I picked up these cute little lights here. Now these are for my little ghosties. If you saw that video, that was my DIY video. I made these little ghosties out of a cheesecloth um, and I'm going to put lights inside of them so they kind of like sparkle. And then I picked these up at Michael's. I picked up these little votive basket buckets. I don't know what you want to call them, but they're so cute. I just had to have them. Um, I picked these up at the Dollar Tree, and then I just got um, two little tea lights, one for each, to go inside. I do have this cute little kitty towel. He kind of seems odd placed since everything else, I guess, is ghosties and bats, but it's okay. Um, I think I'm just going to hang that right here. I don't have a whole lot of decor for the towel bar disco around, but, you know, it is what it is. I also picked up these two guys, these dough bowls. Um, you've seen these in a couple different videos. I found them at Home Goods. Um, which is where I also found this as well. I just thought they were so cute and I couldn't pass them up. So I picked them up and I honestly don't know where I'm putting them at either. I did pick up some ghosts here from Kirkland's. I just thought they were so cute and they are super glittery. Um, they were during their 30% off sale. So I'm not sure um, what the price is. I mean, the regular price is $29.99. But I just thought they were super cute and a little more durable than the other um, I guess viral ghosts that everybody's using which are more like a sticker a sticker that you stick on your wall but anyway and then one last little guy is my little Gus ghost that I created also on that DIY um, video that I made for you guys so let's go ahead um, I think we'll just go ahead and start right here since this is where we're at and we will decorate the dining room table now if you saw my fall video I only put uh, four place settings and yes we are a family of six and yes we have six bar stools but um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do six place settings for Halloween or four. I haven't quite decided yet but I'm super excited because I'm going to be using my new Yellowstone Rip Collection dishes. If you saw that short let me know down in the comments um, but I'm super excited to use those for my Halloween um, place setting. So let's go ahead and get the table done. For sure, funny how you had the best of done. I don't know if I'll make it home. I don't know, not like I care. All I know, sound up the score. Only know I want the best of five. So I.
can never sleep in traffic Just living steady panic I know cause I try asking Now I see through your habits Just like gadgets You tell me with the two hands I'm too bad empty i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab the napkins that i had out here earlier and make little like put the napkins out here um one it'll help pull in the table runner and then also just bring some of the white out here because i feel like the ghost is like super white and everything is like black and orange <laughs> um so let me go ahead and grab those napkins and then we'll maybe make like little pumpkins or something out of them i'm not 100 percent sure but i think that's what we'll do here. guys <laughs> I mean uh, <laughs> my kids are gonna be like what is that I'm sure I don't know if I like it <laughs> I mean it helps bring in more white but I, uh, uh, I mean they're kind of cute I don't know do you guys I don't know what to do what do you what do you think let me know down in the comments. Do we keep them or or no? And I can only find the four napkins that I used from the previous place settings. I, I don't know. So I'm only going to be able to have four anyway. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments because I, I'm not sure that I'm liking them. <laughs> okay. So next up, we're going to go ahead and get this guy set out. Um, I did put the pillow... That was by the blanket ladder over here, but I'm not 100% sure that I like it there. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to put it. Uh, I'll probably just remove it completely, but I want to put him... I'm trying to decide if I want to put Gus 
Like I want him on the couch, but do I want him like on the back of the couch or by the other pillows? I was gonna make another one. I told you guys I was gonna make another one and I didn't. I never had time to to make it, so we're just getting one little pumpkin ghost this year, so or Gus. So let's let's see where we should put him. He's just gonna hang out there because I'm, I'm not really sure I didn't really like him on the cushion um, so I'm not really sure where I want to put him at <sighs> he's just so cute I don't know where to put him I, I don't but I, I kind of like him up there I don't think the cats will bother him there because obviously they sleep there uh, the only problem is is like when the husband hangs out that's where the husband sits um, so I think for now though, I like him there. I would put him in the corner, but this let, like he'll fall probably back behind. So I'm not 100% sure what I wanna do. But I think I think I kinda like him right there. So, we'll leave him right there for now. We've been on and off again and again. I don't know which way we're going, no control. You push me, then you pull me back in. Don't know if I can decipher how your mind works Yeah, you leave me wondering what it's like to feel your skin I will keep on trying till You give me a sign Give me a sign Ah, oh, give me a sign Baby, give me a sign Just give me one more You leave me hanging, begging for more Think that I'm addicted to this, can't resist to be a little risky and go for it cause I want you close, I'm so exposed when you're keeping me wondering, you know I'd do anything to be in your arms again, so give me a sign, give me a sign, oh give me a sign, okay, Baby, I didn't like the netting, um, I'm having a hard time getting the thumbtacks to stick into this faux brick, so I'm gonna have to go another route or wait for my husband on that. Um, I really just want to add some festiveness to this. I don't, I don't love, I don't love the netting, you guys. So I don't know what to do about that. Um, so we're gonna have to like, I, I want the bats up here though. I wanna add the bats. I do wanna add some little ghosts along here somehow. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna go about doing that. Um, so let's go ahead, we'll go ahead and fix this part and then we'll wait for the hubby to do the bats. again, staying up all night to see if you've been texting me. Where do we go from here? I wanna go all in. So give me a sign. could go for this, no more tricks We could take things slow Say you think about it too When the lights go out and there's no doubt That I should be with That I should be We've been on and off again and again I don't know which way we're going, no control You push me then you pull me back in mm -mm -mm. We've been on and off again and again I don't know which way we're going, no control You push me, then you pull me back in So give me a sign Give me a sign Baby, just give me a sign Baby, give me a sign Just give me one more Talking to you and here we go again Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me Where do we go from here? I wanna go all in So give me a sign
quite get it even uh, but I think once I'm able to hang the bats because I think I'm gonna put them over here so they kind of come up and over to kind of add the spooky feel like on this side because we have the little ghosty here and the little 3d printed ghosts in the middle so I feel like if I add the bats here that that will help add spooky vibes over here and maybe help even it out I don't know there's something something needs to go there and I'm not sure what it is <laughs> Um, because it's dumb, it's throwing it off. So, I don't know. I don't know what to do. It's just like throwing it off for me. Maybe it's a ghost that's throwing it off. Maybe I need to take the ghost off the table and bring him out here. So then there's ghosts on either side. But then, I don't know. But then I feel like if I add the bats I have enough bats to put on both sides but I don't want to like overdo it because I really wanted to put um some bats over here like above the tv <sighs> because I really need to bring I really want to bring the spooky vibe over here I have a sign let me go get the sign and I'll put the sign here and then I could probably hang the other set of bats here because it's only the brick wall that I'm having problems with. It's not, I'm sure this wall will be just fine. Because last year I used thumbtacks to hang my Santa stuff up. So I think I can hang the bats here, that's fine. Put the sign here, and then just kind of wait until um, Fred comes home to finish this. Pretend, keep on driving and driving along the roads and never end. Lost my head of Hilma's back between the jars and bottle jug. Just me and all the red lights. Keep on driving and driving. how that looks what do you guys think it's so fun I'm so glad that I got these bats instead of the other like the thinner like paper ones I am really loving that and you guys they're glittery like look at that ah I love it I'm so excited okay at least that's working out for me <laughs> you know maybe maybe I'll just put the other bats on this wall because then I won't have to worry about it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's overkill to have two boxes. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we leave it like that? Or should we put some over here? Or is that, is that enough? You guys tell me what you think. 
Alrighty guys, so this is what I have left. Um, I think I'm just gonna give this to the kiddos. They already asked if they could take it, so we will go ahead and give that to them. Um, I haven't used this. Maybe they'll wanna use that in their room too, I don't know. And I'm still torn on using this outside, so it's gonna go away for right now. I did not put these up, I don't know. I don't love them like I thought I did when I bought them, and I think it's too late because I think they only have a 30-day return policy, so we'll just put those away for next year. But let me show you guys how everything has turned out. So here is the little ghosty guy. I love the way this is looking. It is so spooky, so fun. Um, this is definitely far more um, Halloween than following <laughs> uh, since I took away all the orange. I did just pull these candles out of my bedroom because honestly, I don't want to go spend any more money. <laughs> uh, Christmas is coming and your girl wants to spend money on Christmas and not Halloween anymore. So I went ahead and put the little dough bowls on here as well. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, I mean, the ghost guy kind of looks a little funny maybe, but I think the bat looks super cute. But it, you know, I didn't know where else to put them and I thought it would be fun to put them on the table. I do love how my little napkins turned out. I did find the other one, so I'll have to get some made for the back two plates. Um, or place settings, but I just think this is super cute and I am absolutely loving how this little ghosty looks. I just added the sign. I did use that creepy cloth from the Dollar Tree on there to add kind of some black, kind of give it the little bit more spooky vibes. Um, I added our little jack-o'-lantern friend here with the little light inside. I thought that was perfect right there. Um, I did just move this pumpkin there. And then I absolutely love the bats up there. I think they're super cute and super fun. I did decide that I'm not going to add the other ones over here. I think, um, I mean, I still could if I decide that. You might see that in a later video, but for this one, I'm not going to add them. Um, I did bring in the pumpkins that were on the table in here and the orange candle here as well. Uh, there was two orange candles and the other one is now in here. But I absolutely am loving this. Um, it's super fall, but super festive. It's got the little ghosties on there to add the little spooky touch to it. These little guys are my absolute favorite. I just love them. And I am so happy that I ordered them. Um, he will have lights in him as soon as I get some batteries. <laughs> I'm so bummed that my batteries are gone. I didn't even know they were gone. And it's hurricane season. Why do we not have batteries? But I am loving how this turned out. I just think it is the cutest little display ever. Gus ended up right here on the couch. I think he looks super cute. And of course we have little Miko. <laughs> His favorite spots. I don't know that I love this little thing in this little section, but I think overall it works and I am happy with how everything has turned out. I hope that I was able to give you guys a little bit of inspiration for your own homes. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Stay happy, healthy, and safe, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.